from dnyuz.com protests grow in thailand where speaking out can be perilous from bangkok they shared at a they gathered at a monument celebrating thai democracy they raised their hands in defiance below a giant image of the king dressed in coronation regalia. At least 10,000 protesters, many first-time participants in political rallies gathered in Bangkok on Sunday demanding change in a country where military tanks have tended to shape politics more than the ballot box has. The nearly eight-hour protest, which filled a broad avenue in the heart of the city with black-clad people, was the largest rally in Thailand since a coup in 2014, one of a dozen successful putches, it putches in the country in the last nine decades. Now, I'm not just sharing this story to let you know what's going on in Thailand for our neighbors in Thailand, but I, I think this story gives us a great historical insight into the state of politics there. And one of the things that happens when people aren't as rich as we are here in the United States, when when you don't have people living uh, a subsistence lifestyle, uh, like here in the U.S., we're much more inclined to be politically engaged, to have the luxury of putting time and effort into voting and political activism, or just staying up to injustice when we see it. And one of the effects of the American empire uh, is that countries like Thailand, eh, I should say the, 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 the all, all of the great nations that have had empires, great na- there's no such thing as a great nation. Um, uh, 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 that's like saying a great cancer, right? They're great people. I mean, I guess if you want to use the word nation in a way that implies something bigger than a government or a state, yes, they're, they're, they're going to be great nations. Or if you want to separate those concepts, so, you know, America is a great nation with a shitty government. Well, I don't know. I think I prefer the way Dan Cummins described this. He said, you know, I, I think America's uh, a great country, or it, it, it's it's the best country. So it's probably, probably the best country to live in in the world right now. But is it is it great? I don't know. If you are in a family where every husband beats his wife and you beat your wife the least, you're the best husband in your family. Doesn't make you a great husband. Kind of a weird analogy, but I figured you'd remember it that way. And so when you look at a country like Thailand, that has been the subject uh, of so much imperialism and disadvantage economically so many ways, the temptation of Trumpism is, uh, is even more appealing and you're more likely to be suckered into supporting or going along with the political system that is going to further your oppression and continue to make it harder for you to break out of that you know, cycle of, of poverty. And so we, we see this particularly present to in India, with Modi right now, a sort of Trumpian populist uh, president in India. So in Thailand, let's go back to the subject, a state of emergency instituted because of the coronavirus made the demonstration technically illegal, and every participant could have been arrested simply for showing up. The police stood by, however, some idling behind a Mercedes-Benz showroom. Thailand's growing protest movement, which was set off by student activism last month, has since gained broader support. While Thailand has escaped the brunt of the pandemic, it has been pummeled economically and millions are out of work. With Prayuth Chanoka, the retired general who choreographed the last coup, still leading the country as prime minister, Thais have intensified calls for a new political order. As Nuta Mahatana, a democracy activist, was quoted in the story, we have had many political divisions in our country, but now, no matter what our backgrounds, Many of us are united in questioning the legitimacy of this government. Look at who's here. Many different types of people. The protest leaders have demanded a new constitution, one not written by the military, as the current charter was. They have called for parliament to dissolve. They are pleading for the protection of human rights at a time when vocal critics of the military and monarchy have disappeared and been killed. And they say they will keep gathering if their aims are not met. This is really cool to see. You're skipping ahead in the story. Early on Sunday morning, Pongsek, I just skipped that because I really wanted to read this name on the air. Fusit, Futis, Futits, Fusit Sakul. Is it's not that hard? Fusit Sakul. Pongsek, Fusit Sakul. In a po- opposite, it took me a few tries there. An opposition politician whose party was dissolved before it was able 
to contest elections last year, said his dogs alerted him to six plainclothes police officers who went to his home. He said to intimidate him ahead of the rally, as he said, quote, I'm used to it, but I'm worried about the youth. What will they face and what their parents and families have to face? Previous type protests have been crushed with force with dozens killed in downtown Bangkok, students included. You go, oh, shit. Yeah, that's how they got to this point. Like, why? Why have they had this military rule in place for so long? Well, gee, when you put the military in charge of the government and allow them to just, I don't know, use military force against their political opponents, this is what happens. So this has been a history that we've seen in Thailand over the last couple of decades, but now it's coming to a new head. Even though many of the protesters on Sunday were posting selfies on Instagram and Facebook, at least when the internet hadn't slowed to a crawl, Few of the first-time participants wanted to give their names. A 17-year-old high school student stood at the rally holding a small handmade sign that said, Dictatorship shall perish, long live democracy. She posed willingly for a picture, but balked at identifying herself. She had told her parents she was going to the movies. Somehow, she said she had ended up at the protest instead. <laughs> Whoops. I love this. And I love seeing a righteous populist movement coming to possibly overthrow an, an unjust political regime. And uh, did I say unjust political regime? I think the unjust part is, is uh, redundant there. But they, they were at least seeing a tipping point reached, a, a critical mass being achieved perhaps in Thailand that will lead to a major shift in their politics and could usher in a, a new era of freedom for their country in a really beautiful, positive way. Now, I'm not blindly optimistic. You know, a surge in protests in Thailand does not a revolution make without the successful political follow through that these that, that's, you know, the, the, what these protests are really calling for. And one of the biggest stories that we're covering, we're following and, and, and we'll be bringing you more news on as we see, uh, you know, significant updates. There is what's going on in Hong Kong with uh, Beijing now taking over, imposing new rule, driving businesses out. This was happening in follow-up, or just coincidental timing, I'm sure. Why did the Wuhan virus blow up exactly when it did? Well, a big part of that might have been the protests in Hong Kong, where we saw uh, after the, uh, the virus state of emergency, the Beijing government moving in, taking over buildings to set up intelligence service operations, really scary shit and as beautiful as this is to see people coming together in thailand and cj if you just pull up this picture massive sit-in it's really you know and 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 there's you know it's funny it's kind of a dark picture showing that people are wearing a lot of black but it really is beautiful and you can tell there's a beautiful spirit behind this so i hope and pray that both in thailand and and hong kong and in so many other places around the world, economically significantly disadvantaged so much by imperialism that they have succumbed to militaristic regimes that perhaps the shakeup around coronavirus, while an initial setback and strengthening of government power, can lead us to breaking points that will lead to the overthrow of some of the world's most brutal regimes, especially the one here in the U.S.